Google recently announced that their 2FA Authenticator app, which is called Google Authenticator, will now give you the option to back up your one-time codes into the cloud. But recent news has made me recommend not using this feature since potentially Google could see the secret codes when they get uploaded. Now, if you paused at this point and you are asking, wait, what is 2FA? Well, you're in luck. I have got an entire playlist on my channel just about two-factor authentication, how it's used, what the different protocols are, and how to choose the best 2FA option for you and your lifestyle. Now, since pass keys and passwordless logins are still not widely used, but we should be seeing more of that in the future, we have to rely on using usernames and passwords. Plus, 2FA codes or hardware keys to log into most of our accounts. So why would you choose a less secure option for logging in if a more secure option is available? My all-time favorite that I have recommended for many years has been the YubiKey. Now these are little hardware keys that are made by Yubico. They are reliable. They can be used for multiple accounts so you don't have to buy one for each and every single of your accounts that you have online. And it's a one-time cost. I'm actually partnering with Yubico on this video to share some alternatives to cloud 2FA backups with Google Authenticator, and I love their keys. I highly recommend them. I've bought so many of these over the years and I've given them to friends as gifts. I love what their company does for consumer security. We are so lucky because I have a coupon code that you can use for $5 off a key. Use the code Shannon Morse, spelled just like my name says right here, during checkout. I am so glad to work with Yubico since it's a brand that I have been a huge fan of for such a long time. If you see my work back on Hack5, I've mentioned them many times on all those previous episodes. So Huge thanks to Yubico for continuing to be a sponsor on my channel and for being an advocate for reasonable and convenient security. So Google's Authenticator app has been around for a very long time, since 2010. It's been a very long time. But the problem is with a two-factor authentication app, if you rely on it for your codes and maybe your phone gets damaged or stolen or lost, then what do you do? If you can't open the app and maybe you don't have the backup codes on you, then how do you get into an online account that requires said code? Google finally answered this problem by adding cloud backups of your OTPs or your one-time passcodes, AKA your one-time codes. This means that you can now enable a feature within the Google Authenticator app that lets all of your codes get stored in your Google account. You can then get access to your codes on any device where you are signed into the same Google account. Now this sounds awesome, but as soon as this feature was announced, researchers figured out that the data was not being end-to-end -end encrypted while it was uploaded to the Google servers. And that means that Google or anybody else with access could see the backup codes. Now, Google responded already, and they said that they will add end-to-end -end encryption in a future version of Google Authenticator, but at time of recording, that's still not available yet. So I am going to recommend some reliable and reasonable alternatives that you can use instead of Google Authenticator. Since these cloud backups are not end-to-end -end encrypted, you should be relying on a more secure option for 2FA if you do indeed need to depend on some kind of backups for your codes. Now, I do have a side note. There are going to be plenty of folks, especially in my audience, who Google Authenticator will work perfectly for. Maybe you don't want to send 2FA codes to a cloud backup because you never lose your phone and you have all of your account recovery codes printed out and safely stored somewhere as you should. Maybe you rarely upgrade your phone. You're not like me and you don't like review a new phone every six months. So you almost never have to go through the process of setting up Google Authenticator on a new phone, which can be very tiresome. You have to make sure that you have some alternate way to log in if you use a 2FA app, because if your phone gets damaged or lost or stolen, you'll get locked out of your accounts without having a backup. That's because 2FA apps generate all those codes, generate them, on your local device. They aren't sent from anywhere like they are if you use text messages for your 2FA codes. Now, if that works for your lifestyle, awesome. You've prepared yourself with an alternate way to log in. That's really good security. But we also need to go into this with the understanding that everyone has different levels of security needs. So if you switch your phone a lot, like 
like I do, you may need cloud backups. If you have accounts that are targeted in attacks or you want something that is less likely to be lost or stolen, then maybe a hardware key will serve you better, especially if you are one of those people that find yourself often being targeted in attacks. Threat modeling in this case is so important. So we really can't tell people that security has to be this one absolutionist way. And that is why I have taken this very pragmatic approach to my recommendations. I understand that everybody has different threat models, basically. So I have two alternatives for you. I'm not going to recommend switching to SMS or text messages for 2FA since those codes are sent over the air to your phone. That means that they they could be intercepted or somebody could clone your phone number and receive those codes on their phone. This is called SIM swapping and it's something I've done a video on in the past. Using an application is definitely better, but you have to make sure that you protect your 2FA Authenticator app account and you protect the codes that are inside that account and you never share them. You also have to be very careful about what sites you type those codes into because criminals can make very realistic looking login pages Pages, they can watch you type in your username, password, and 2FA code while you are typing them into a fake site, which they could then just copy and paste into the real site and log into your accounts with those credentials that they just stole from you. This attack is called spoofing. Now, the first thing you should do is check your online accounts to see what 2FA options they make available. Some of them, unfortunately, will only allow for SMS texted codes, which is still better than nothing, Others will allow you to get codes via an in-app and others will let you use a hardware key. Or maybe some websites will let you use a combination of a hardware key and an app, uh, like Google's Gmail and Google accounts do this. YouTube does this as well. Picking the best options, and I say options because you can totally use more than one of these, will depend on your own accounts and lifestyle. There is a wonderful site. I love this site so much. Hopefully it's still available whenever you're watching this video if it's in the future, it's called 2FA.directory. This is a great reference point and it can also help you figure out what kind of security you should use for each of your different types of websites and accounts that you use online. Now, the best recommendation I can make, and I would make this recommendation whether they were partnering on this video or not, is YubiKeys. Now, if a site that you use has the option to use a 2FA hardware key, then use this option. First off, a little flash drive looking thing, like one of these, is not going to be as likely to be lost or stolen. Like if somebody has the option to steal a phone or steal a flash drive on a keychain, they're gonna steal the phone because that's the thing that they can sell for money. Plus, it's less likely to be stolen, especially if you leave it at home in a safe or on your keychain with your house keys. Because of cookies, you don't have to use this every single time that you wanna log into an app. Just like with 2FA codes, if you're currently like pulling up the Twitter app every day on your phone, you don't have to log into the Twitter app every single day. And it's the same thing with 2FA codes. You don't have to type them in every single day and you don't have to use a YubiKey every single day. It really just depends on when your device forgets your login or you manually choose to log out and you have to re-authenticate yourself. Now, many sites online allow you to set up more than one YubiKey. So you can have a backup one stored somewhere safe just in case your primary key does get damaged or lost. And that's a question that I often see. I also believe that I covered that question on my 2FA myths in debunking hardware YubiKey myths a video that I did, I believe last year. So check out that video too. They do protect you better from that spoofing attack that I had mentioned previously too, since YubiKey use several different protocols or methods to verify your login. So if a site implements them with this very special protocol, it's called FIDO2, then you would never even see a code. And an attacker would not be able to steal a code because the code does not exist. <laughs> the YubiKeys create this special secret handshake with the website that you set it up on. So both the website and the YubiKey agree to let you in whenever you use it. If the attacker tries to point you at a spoofing site and you plug in a YubiKey thinking that it's the real site, the YubiKey is going to prompt you with a little pop-up and say, hey, this site does 
not match what I was expecting. So I'm, I can't work because I don't recognize this website. You might think it looks real, but the YubiKey is going to determine that it's a fake website. Since the YubiKey did not receive the right signal from the fake site, the attacker hits this brick wall and they won't be able to log into the site because they can't copy that YubiKey from wherever they are. They would literally need your username, your password, and your physical key to get into said site. And this is what makes it so secure. Because while nothing is perfect in this world, and yes, you can still use YubiKeys as OTPs instead of FIDO2, that's a whole thing too, it is a lot less likely that somebody who steals a little YubiKey would also have your username and password on hand. And it's also less likely that somebody would have access to a YubiKey plus those two credentials long enough to make use of it before you would notice it missing. And if you do lose your key, it's very easy to log into sites and revoke the missing key, especially if you took my advice and you have a secondary one stored safely somewhere that could then be used as your primary key. Okay. So YubiKeys, hardware keys sound great, but maybe a site that you are using does not accept hardware keys like banks. Yeah, banks are really annoying about this. Why don't banks accept hardware keys? It's 2023 people, come on. And maybe you don't want to depend on an application that doesn't back up your codes to the cloud. Maybe you need that convenience because you switch phones a lot, or maybe you just need that convenience because you have multiple devices. There are several different apps that do offer cloud backups securely, and they offer multi-device code generation. That way, no matter which device you're using, you could still log into your applications or your accounts online. Even if you're using your iPhone instead of your Android one day, you would still get codes on either of those and it doesn't matter which device you're using. So the one I recommend to most folks is Authy because it is free, it's available on iPhones and Androids, and it really doesn't care which app or which device you're using. It's very convenient. Even though Twilio, Authy's parent company, had a security breach back in 2022, they're still my recommendation because you can take some precautions even with your codes backed up. And they did remediate that situation very quickly. For example, you can lock the application itself with a pin code. So if somebody unlocks your phone, they would still need a separate code or you can lock it with a biometric. So they would need your fingerprint, for example, to unlock the app itself. So if you've linked your Authy account on multiple different phones, you can also go into your settings and revoke any phones that shouldn't have access anymore. Like if you sold an old, old phone and you forgot that Authy was authorized on that phone, you can go in and revoke it. And if you do set up an Authy app to give you codes on multiple different devices, like maybe you have a work phone and a personal phone, then you can keep those two devices set up, but then disable a setting called allow multi device, which means that no new devices could be added to your account unless you manually turn that setting back on. Like if you needed to upgrade to a new phone, that way you still have access on your two devices, but it if anybody at any time wanted to add another device to your account, they couldn't because that setting is disabled altogether. So you do have options. And I often see people ask me, why should I get a hardware key if I can just use Authy? And I do have a few reasons. If you don't already have a secondary phone, it is cheaper to buy two YubiKeys than it is to buy an extra phone to keep stored as a backup, especially since smartphone batteries die. And if you ever resold that phone, you would need to remember to erase it and revoke that device on all of your online accounts. Improperly implemented hardware key compatibility on websites means that it can prevent phishing of those codes since there is no six digit code that human eyes can see that gets typed in. So should you use the Google Authenticator app right now? Sure, I have used it and it's a wonderful app. It's a great app for 2FA codes, but just don't use the cloud backup option at this time since it is not end to end encrypted. Keep those codes secret, keep them safe, just like Gandalf said, and better yet, upgrade to either an application that uses end-to-end -end encryption, if you need the cloud backups, or even better, upgrade to a 2FA option that doesn't even require codes like a hardware key. Luckily, we do have options to make 2FA convenient and easy for everyone. So when we do find out about security vulnerabilities, we can adjust our lifestyles to better protect ourselves. If you have questions about 2FA or you need a deeper discussion on it, or there's something that I didn't necessarily cover in this video because I'm trying to keep it kind of short, I have other videos. 
I have this whole playlist ready for you. Chances are I answered your question. Or check out this video that YouTube thinks that you will enjoy. Thank you for watching. Bye, y'all.